for Nigeria, Britain must be its major market. It should be, Nigeria should be the garden of, uh, of Britain, of vegetables, of various commodities, of finished goods flowing in from day to day and vice versa. That is the way it should be. We, we have been identified as one of the biggest um, uh, land owner that has um, over 80 million arable land classified as good for agriculture. And since the, uh, the, world, the, the, the World Bank or the World Organization has said that um, the population is going to increase by another 1 billion in the next uh, uh, 10 years. Uh, there could be no better way to address this. Um, we're beginning to see a whole lot of things that we normally cash, call, call as um, waste in agriculture that is coming back again. Uh, we're beginning to see cassava played a very great role in terms of um, industrial material, ethanol, high cassava flour taking over from uh, the wheat they say they cannot grow in Nigeria before. Wheat is growing, our generic cutting is coming back. Um, we're beginning to see a whole lot of things coming up from the palm. So it's a good way for anybody who wants to invest in long term, short term, whichever way you want to have a look at it. This is just the time to come into it. And as a British Chamber of Commerce member, I have seen it done by captain of industries, going out to the peasant farmers, going out to touch the rural setting in every dimension. So it's a great way to work. It's a great body to join. It's a great way to see how we can actually mediate between the British government or the British entrepreneur or the British business person and the, the locals in Nigeria. The emphasis of the current government in Nigeria on diversification of the economy away from oil is a good thing. Uh, and a lot of emphasis on agriculture. It's early days, it's the same all people who know about subsistence farming who have been encouraged through the various programs, ANCOP, ANCOP program, NASEL, to get their production higher. Uh, we, we want to, I want to recommend the young ones to start to look in that direction. I was watching a program on television last Sunday. I saw a number of uh, young people showing interest in that sector. In fact, there's one young man who called himself African farmer, who, who is a consultant in that, in that sector. He was describing the value chain of the agricultural sector. Investors from Britain trying to explore those areas those can be the laws. Of course, the existing large investment in industries and manufacturing we have strong British persons. And it's either those ones that have been you know, expanded or we are having backward integration with active British involvement. That is bilateral Nigerian British investors going into you know, further areas, especially in that portion of food process. Yeah, the whole legal structure that we have in this country today, uh, the court system, the, the base of the laws, which is, you know, which is the common law, uh, the legislations, um, and the uh, process of company you know, formation, company administration, are all founded on the British uh, system. There have been some changes you know, here and there, but uh, basically it's very much uh, borrowed from, the, you know, from Britain. That should ordinarily be an attraction for doing business because understanding the system, you know, should not be a problem. Um, so we have um, there's been a lot of benefit derived, you know, from that knowledge. Many lawyers from Nigeria trained in Britain and uh, and do business there, you know, from you know from day to day. Um, arbitration. Many lawyers in Nigeria are involved in arbitration, even in international arbitration. You know. So. There's a basis for uh, um, rational, you know, um, you know business um, um, dealings on a, on a daily basis from between Nigeria and Britain. Nigeria is always and has always been a kind of um, uh, a good ally 
to the British government. Now, what, what that means in reality terms in doing business here is that we speak the same language. Um, all our educational curriculum are all written in English language. As a matter of fact, we have one common language then if you don't speak Queen's English, you're not speaking no English. And uh, events or activities of the Chamber of Embassies in the UK definitely have the opportunity of attracting any of those 51 others at the same time to its own choosing venue. We must against visiting individual without uh, for closing the possibility of having to pay specific visits to be posted by different chambers across the UK. Businesses that are owned by us, let's make sure we expand the scope of those businesses in the area of partnership. Let's bring in more people. The businesses are not based on us and on us alone. It's better to have 10% of a thousand, which is a hundred, than have a hundred percent of a one hundred. Which is one hundred. We are better off. Bake a big, a bigger cake. So by the time you have three, four partners, the one you'll be taking will still be bigger, far bigger than if you are the only one picking this smaller cake. The partnership has the NBCC um, offers you first of all access to its four hundred and something members, and then um, we have various events. You know, various kinds of events that give you the platform, breakfast meetings, exhibitions, um, and all sort of things. So, so there's member to member, there's um, business to business interaction, and then you have an opportunity of you know transacting business with other people. So it exposes such a business, you know, and it gives the confidence that comes with having um, a, a larger network. So that's that's um, for me is non-negotiable. I mean, and it's, um, it's, you can't quantify. We need to be very selective of the kind of programs we have and it has to be programs that will assist members. There must be a connection between members, the kind of networking. When there is effective networking, it not only lifts up the companies that are members, it also and make the chamber grow in a kind of relationship. When, we, when the chamber can get to the point where networking is effective, I'm not saying there is no networking now, but it's not effective. Um, we don't know much about each other. I know occasionally we have a, a kind of a get together, but get together not just in eating and chatting, but get together in doing businesses together. We need to work together. We need to assist each other. If you are in the kind of business that will help me, then we should do it together. We should be able to work together and benefit from each other. We have opportunity to network. We have people who can mentor you. I mean, a person who has been in business for 30, 20, 30 years, can be a good mentor to somebody who's just starting. So that don't make the mistakes that we made. That, that way, you can get into the business that will be profitable to you. And when there are problems along the line, there is somebody who can quote us, ah, please, how did you do this? Ah. Well, no. Um, a lot of people that want to come into Nigeria, from the UK, from the US, wherever they want to come to Nigeria, um, they always have an issue with getting visas uh, from the respective Nigerian embassy submissions. You know, and in, I mean, Nigerian embassies are not in every country of the world. You know. So they typically would have issues with sometimes they say it takes weeks, sometimes months. But the process is such that you don't need to approach any Nigerian embassy. If you're coming to Nigeria um, on business, uh, if you're coming to Nigeria for a short visit, um, you can just fly into the country. You know, you have applied via your uh, business partner uh, for a visa and arrival. And when you get into Nigeria, the visa is, the visa is issued at the point of entry. Um, I was reading the papers, I think, today or yesterday, that in fact now, because another problem um, that foreigners used to experience, how do I then pay? You know, um, a lot of them um, come with their credit cards and their uh, debit cards and they cannot pay. But now, 
um, you can actually walk to any post of entry and use your um, your debit card or your credit card uh, to make this payment. So it's, it's I mean that in that regard, you know, so um, the typical hurdle that businessmen have to go through, you know, so um, how much time do I need to apply for a visa and all of that? I think that is changing. But a good one is also the ease of registering businesses. So it's not a myth that you can actually sit in your comfort of your room wherever and actually get online to the uh, CAC website and get to say, company. You can do the availability. So it actually cuts out the middle man. You know, it's not good for some of us in you know, this business uh, that is to make start from the You can actually sit in your room wherever you are in the world you know, and get uh, actually get uh, fully registered. We have beautiful appearance. We have good ecology, just like most people all over the world. Yes, you may have the good, but you have the bad along with it, and the ugly. But the truth is that Africa, our Africa, particularly Nigeria, is a beautiful place. What I like about Nigeria is the future is night. You have good climate, you have, you know, very friendly people, warm people. And let me throw it back to say that you were once said to be the happiest people in the world, and I think it is true. Because in spite and despite the challenges that we face, we find that in the world's happy. Nigerians love relaxations. They eat well, they play well, they sleep well. Everything that Nigerian does, it does well. And that's what I love about Nigeria.